Hi, I'm Tom, coming to you from the Don't Screw It Up World Headquarters and Workshop in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland is also the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm wearing the hat to prove it. So today I'm going to show you how to replace the head assembly on this Corona tree pruner. This is a good product. I've had this for about 10 years, got a lot of life out of it, but it's kind of falling apart. I've already replaced a few parts on here, the blades, you know, getting pretty dull. So I'm just going to replace the whole head assembly to get a few more years of life out of this. This is manufactured by the company Corona, no relation to the beer or the virus. Uh, and I ordered this part directly from the manufacturer. I always recommend getting the factory approved parts instead of the cheap knockoffs. So this looks like a simple installation. I open up the bag, there's two things in it. I got the head assembly, it's already put together, no assembly required on that. And there's one bolt and a nut. How much more simple can this be? I could probably do this job in about two minutes. So this looks like a Phillips head bolt with a hex nut. Let me grab a couple tools. I think I can do this job with a Phillips head screwdriver and a crescent wrench. So here we go. First that thing I wanna do is disassemble the current assembly head. So I'm gonna remove that bolt and nut. On this side, I see there's no, this is a flat head, smooth head bolt here. I can't do anything there. Oh, geez, come on. It's a trick. It's one nut and bolt to reassemble it, but there's not a nut and bolt to disassemble it. So this project's all about disassembly, not reassembly. These are tough to get off. I mean, this is made in the factory. They're using a machine tool to assemble this. And I'm sitting here, there's no instructions with this. I searched all over the internet. There's no, there's no way to tell me how to get this head off of here. So now I gotta figure out how to remove the head from the shaft without destroying the shaft or screwing up the job somehow. So this is gonna take a little improvisation. So I'm gonna break out some tools here, but before I do that, our first priority here in the Don't Screw It Up workshop is safety. So I'm gonna put on my safety glasses. I'm gonna wear gloves because I'm working with sharp tools and I don't wanna cut any of my digits off. So how do you disassemble a bolt like this? The way these are typically made is it's basically uh, one bolt that sits inside of a sleeve on the other side and they smash that down with a hammer and it basically ties itself in. I don't think this is threaded in any way because there's no head on either side. This is just a compression bolt that was made in a factory using a tool and I don't have a tool to take one of these out. So what are our options? Here we go. Before you start, you gotta clamp down your work. So the first thing I did here is I clamped down my work. I don't want this moving around on me when I'm using sharp tools and things. That's a good way to get injured. So I got a bolt here. It's got two round heads, one on each side. I need to cut it off somehow. So that implies I could possibly use a bolt cutter. I got one right here. So if I can just get this cutter blade under that small head, I can possibly snap the head of this bolt off. Oh, that's not going anywhere. The next option I have is to try to cut one of those two heads off with another tool. My first choice would be a hacksaw. I'm gonna try hacksaw, see if I can just get that under that lip. Okay, that hacksaw is kind of working, but that's a slow go. This is gonna take me a while at this rate. I'm gonna try a power tool. This is called the Dremel Multimax. This is basically a little vibrating tip at the top that works just like a hacksaw. You wanna have the right blade on here. This is one is for metal cutting. So I'm gonna plug this in. You turn this on and that little blade oscillates just like if you were a robot and you could use this thing really fast, like kind of like that. Here we go. Now, when you want to use this tool, you always want it facing away from you because there's a temptation to go like this. If that thing slips off the head, my arm's right over here. That's a bad scene.
You can see the blade cutting off that head now. So I cut the small raised head off of one side of this, and now I'm gonna use a punch and a hammer and try to punch that down through the other side. So I use this punch and a hammer, put the punch right on what's left of that, this side of that bolt. Now you can see what I just did there. I put the punch right on that hole, punched down on it with the hammer, boom, popped it out the other side. So that bolt's coming out now. That's really a pin, not really a bolt. I'm gonna pull that pin out now. So now I'm gonna use the claw on my claw hammer, see if I can just get a little leverage. That does not wanna come out. Now I'm at risk of damaging the rest of the tool. So all I need is a punch, something where I can punch it through like a nail. Now I'm just using a nail to finish the job. So here's the pin. That was the factory installed pin. Upon further inspection, there was no easier way to get that out. So I made a good guess. Now I can remove the old head assembly. I'm just going to grab the shaft here, grab the assembly and twist it. There it is. That came off pretty easy. It just sits on this rubber tip. But I can see I lost my hole here, so that tip actually slid down a little bit as well. So I got to push that tip back down. Just going to use a little mallet here. There it is. Now I see the hole. I got good clearance. There it is. Ready to go. That disassembly is done. Now to assemble the new part, I got the new part right here. The whole assembly, it's all intact. No, nothing required. I just slide that on there. Now this fits a little looser over that rubber tip. That's a little odd and interesting. Yeah, that does not fit down as snug as the one that came off. So I'm gonna have to force this bolt through there to try to pull this down onto the, the hole. Cause I don't know if you can see on the movie, but it doesn't quite line up with that hole. So I got to pull it on with this and you don't want to bung up the threads while you're doing that. So that's a little tricky. That's an easy way to screw the job up. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure I got clearance on this to make sure that that rubber tip is lined up over the shaft. It is now, man, that does not want to go down on there. So I got to force this bolt through that hole. Now, normally you never want to do this. You never want to hit a bolt with a hammer because you can bung up the threads. But I, this will work because I'm going through soft material. I'm going through that rubber tip and I'm going through this fiberglass. So I don't believe this will bung up my threads. If it does, I'm screwed. There she is. I just used a rubber mallet to do that. So I got my Phillips head on this side. Let's flip her over. Then I got my nut. On this side, this nut has a little nylon washer in it that should keep it from wanting to spin off of there. This is the bad part about putting a replacement part on this product is that because you don't have that factory sealed pin in there, this thing's gonna wanna unscrew over time. That's why they gave you the, the nylon nut. I'm just using a crescent wrench to dial that down until my bolt starts turning. Now I gotta hit it from both sides. So I grab, I hold the crescent wrench on the nut on the bottom. You want to really tighten that <clears throat> as tight as you can because you don't want that head to get loose. It's really important to get that tight. Now, so here's what you're looking at with this replacement part. You got this bolt sticking out. So when you're trying to pull through leaves and ivy and grapevines and all kinds of stuff, this is going to want to get stuck on you know some of that vegetation unlike that smooth tip they had on there before you know i guess that's just the nature of putting a replacement part on so that job's done 100 percent i'm going to go prune some trees i'm glad to have this thing back in action i always like this tool a lot good luck with your next project and don't screw it up